Hey everyone, this is Ergo Josh, and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update about what's going on with me and the channel before I get into today's topic. So I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube for about a month um, and hopefully coming back into the first week of June. But when I say a break, it doesn't mean I'm not going to post here or a live stream. It just means that I'm not going to be doing my regularly scheduled type of YouTube videos where I'm doing tutorials, reviews, all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to be doing is doing either voiceovers or a talking head thing like this, where I'm telling you guys some things that I feel like are important um, for the art community, especially while we're indoors and working on our craft. Um, but also, you know, thinking about how I can incorporate this into my podcast in the future. I, if you don't know, I have uh, started a little podcast a few months ago. I think it was last year, actually, but it's called Art Food. Um, and I'll probably be uploading a portion of this video there. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. You'll still see videos from me every week, but they're going to be much more laid back. And yeah, it's going to be a speed paint, a voiceover, or just a video like this, depending on what you guys like more. And so the reason for this is because I'm actually planning to move. Um, I'm planning to move during <laughs> the COVID outbreak, but I found, I decided that it was the best thing for me to do. Uh, because especially in my state in Georgia, things are going to start ramping up soon here. And ideally, I wanted to actually move before businesses started opening back up. But unfortunately, I'll be moving like right as businesses are starting back up. So I still think it's better than waiting um, too much longer. And honestly, I really need to because it's just where I am in this point of life with my business. I uh, started my YouTube channel and Ergo Josh and everything living in my parents' house um, and... I was actually sharing a desk with my dad to do a lot of that stuff until I kind of moved back a little bit and got my own desk. And then I, once I got into this studio, this is still living with my parents, but at least, you know, they built a new house. I helped out with the design and I included my own studio for the, for myself, just a little 10 by 10 foot room. Um, and so that worked out really well, but it's still really, really cluttered and I can't do a lot of the ideas and designs and work as freely as I want. So I've been saving all this time and I'm finally able to live in the city in an apartment that has plenty of space for everything that I need to do, um, fits everything that I want, my aesthetic, the area, um, and I can't wait to get into that. And so I'll be moving down there pretty soon here and uh, you'll slowly start to see, maybe you won't, I don't know how much I'll show, but this whole entire place will start you know, to get emptier and emptier and emptier and then slowly moved out until um, we're just, you just see me in a new space and, uh, let me know if you want me to do like an apartment tour or studio tour kind of update kind of video once I moved in or just once I finally have my keys. So with that out of the way, I wanted to get into this video's topic. I don't know what the title is going to be just yet. I was thinking like what boomers, what art boomers had that we don't have or something. <laughs> but, uh, I was thinking about this recently because I was watching some videos, looking for some podcasts to listen to while I work on my art. Um, and you know, by the way, you know, that's what I hope people do with this video and my podcast in the future. I want you guys to be able to have something, you know, to enrich you. That's why it's called art food so that you can be enriched while you're working on your content and kind of forget about worrying <laughs> about what you're actually doing. Um, so Proko made a video where he was asking professionals, older professionals, one tip that they would give themselves or one thing that they wish they had when they were younger and i noticed a lot of them were talking about how in today's day and age we have so much information available it's so easy to learn um, and different things like that about the internet they say we didn't have the internet we had to go to the library and all that kind of stuff and it just got to thinking like um you know it seems like it's such a great time to be an artist now because of youtube you know everyone found out hey i can make money if i teach people what i know <laughs> uh but at the end of the day, it's like it's actually a double edged sword. I think uh, for a lot of younger people coming up now, even all the way up to millennials, it's really easy to get distracted. It's really easy to get discouraged because there's so much content out there. So when I say that, I'm talking about not just, you know, YouTube videos and tutorials. You can get distracted watching tutorials all day, but there's also social media. Um, and all of the things that can start to bring your, like, they'll just bring your spirit down and make you feel frustrated and disappointed in yourself because you're bombarded with new art 
all day and you're learning about who's making it and sometimes it'll just be people around your age and you feel disappointed in yourself um, and you feel like you can't grow so if i talk about myself for a second i actually grew up and i'm just 25 years old so i'm still you know a millennial and i grew up without really having too much of the internet even though you know it was accessible the internet was something that we had to turn on and cost like money i remember when we finally moved up from aol dial up i remember that day specifically so drawing for me was a very natural experience which is how i think it starts out for a lot of younger people and um, when i say younger i mean like children toddlers you know when they first get their crayon and they're you know drawing on the walls that experience carried longer for me than i think it is for people now um so what i mean by that is i remember there was a book about just animals and i was having fun just drawing animals from that book i wasn't thinking about how great they looked i just wanted to capture what i saw from the book i remember drawing a black panther in the book and i was really happy with it um, i remember in kindergarten i would trace from coloring books i would just trace them and people loved to see my tracings and i would do that and i'm sure i was building up some form of skill <laughs> back then um but i was really happy with that and i didn't really worry too much about you know is this going to look great on instagram or any of that stuff like even into elementary school i was getting the how to draw 50 this books you know um where they start out with the terrible tips of just drawing really basic 2d shapes that don't really teach you to understand what you're drawing but just kind of replicate it but still it was good and i would get into a lot of origami i got this advanced like origami bird making book and i was trying to make these really cool birds and they would never fly because i used too much glue um and then looking back and then getting closer and closer to now still like right before instagram started becoming popular i was making artwork in class and i was just doing stuff that i really enjoyed conceptually um and before instagram actually before that the place the internet had in my life was through forums online so deviantart was where it was it was really shining back then um and other than that there are a few other websites i went to i think one of them was like daryltank.com or something there was he was a really great pencil artist or still is i'm sure and there was another guy i can't remember his name but he had this forum and it was just about pencil portraits and he did he was really good at it and he had a lot of people who also were aspiring you know or some people were really good or even better than him at drawing portraits with pencil on paper really fine highly detailed stuff that's the kind of stuff i like to do and i would be on those forums share my work get tips from them look at their work and look through their galleries and see their process it was a lot slower you didn't get bombarded with updates every morning you had to wait until you could get access to the internet and scroll through you had to wait until other people felt like posting um, you had you had the ability to look through their tutorials and stuff and even on DeviantArt it was the same way it was just a lot wider expanse of artwork and you could really easily just get stuck in your little niche um, which is why I kind of ended up not knowing about comics I never really got into comics I was pretty sheltered growing up but yeah I didn't even know what anime was until college because just because I never got to like consistently watch a show it was just here and there so I kind of I never really got to fully watch dragon ball z which you know that's a bad example because they have so many fillers <laughs> or just wasteful episodes but yeah it it just was something where i just got all into this pencil drawing thing and i never really understood the whole file film and game art industry and all that so i did all that and i'm saying all that to say that i was able to just have a very natural growth and i wasn't really frustrated but i still was able to make stuff i still was able to really get into the details and try to figure out what's the best tool to to blend skin on paper what's the best paper to do and to use for that and i was like vellum or bristol or i like this brand and that brand and then i found this perfect little tool here and then i realized you know toilet paper is the best thing um it's a great thing that toilet paper was plentiful back then instead of now <laughs> i didn't the internet and social media wasn't really there to distract me too much and i think that's what happened for a lot of people who are boomers or in their upper 30s and 40s and beyond now who are artists they didn't have those distractions um, i think back then art was way more of a luxury things were tougher back then you know um 
a lot of a lot of I'm sure you know your parents have always told you if you're around my age about how much how different things were for them back back in the day you know whatever and how cheap things some some things were like gas but uh things were very different and some people just didn't have the ability to draw or learn to draw and they had to struggle for it if they did they had to go to the library and find a book and stick to that book and just copy it and what that would allow you to do is just get focused in on doing work and growing and learning from your mistakes you weren't really this source of like anxiety wasn't there that i think is prevalent among us now i don't think that they really dealt with that back then they were worried about you know you know making ends meet and you know surviving but when it came to art i think it was just like how can i learn this they were just seeking they had to go to conventions to see their favorite artists and get them and actually talk to them they had to really make it a huge effort to to learn and every time they had the ability to do that it would mean a lot you know you can't dm and just watch you know 30 videos on how to do this and dm all these artists back then it's like you found one book you found a website you found someone in real life and you talked to them and that's all you had and you had to actually sit down and go with it and i think that's what I actually envy for at least our generation from the older generation is because they had that ability to focus without distraction, even though it was difficult for them to learn. And I think wealth and probably some privilege and opportunities really did kind of separate who could become successful artists back then. But at the same time, the ability to sit down and focus and get to work without really getting too frustrated and anxious was also a huge thing that separated people from being great artists to compared to now. So if I compare, you know, the older generation to us and you look at things like Instagram and you look at things like Twitter and all of that in the morning, you can just go on your phone and be scrolling through and seeing what people are doing and just be bombarded with stuff. And you start having this improper development in your head about where you should be. Um, I don't really understand how it is because, you know, we should be able to recognize that other people are older than us and have more experience, but they're still, we're still kind of comparing ourselves to them as if we're equal because maybe we're on the same platform or something. I'm not really sure, but, you know, I think I read an article online that was talking about how, you know, success is highly, highly celebrated now. Like youthful success is almost too celebrated and we're praising people that are our age that are the top you know, 1% of the 1% that are successful. So I think you, you really have to, I I want to kind of have this out there so that people can see, okay, I need to kind of take a step back and do a little bit more research on what people have done to get to where they are. So one of my favorite artists is Stanley Lau, and I've watched his live streams a few years ago when I was in college and, you know, just playing around and trying to kind of get serious about digital art, but I really wasn't serious yet. And he talked about just how long he'd been training. You know, he's been doing this thing for what, 30 something years now, if not 20 something years. And I just think about like how effortless it is for him to draw, you know, poses, um, repeated poses. He has like 20 or 30 poses. I bet like he can just draw without any effort or any reference at all. Um, and I think like, well, If I get stressed out about that, then that means that I'm ignoring his 20 plus years of experience and trying to compare it to my two years, you know, because when Stanley is talking about that, so he's what, 40, I think he's like around 45 now. So if we take 20 years, that's 25. And I think that's my age now. And so I'm pretty sure at 25, most people are getting pretty serious and they know about, you know, the fundamentals by then. They kind of have their first 25 years doing some form of art having fun with it but then they start getting serious so imagine him when he says 20 years it's 20 years of serious hard work so it's like for me i think i have two and a half years of serious hard work and how can i compare that to him and you know get disappointed and frustrated when i have a tenth of a percent of the experience that he's had um and so when i when i see a lot of people talking about like art block um and i talk to them i realize A lot of it is actually that they're too scared to work on on their work. They're too scared to draw something new because they are just highly disappointed in themselves and they put too much pressure and expectation on themselves to do something that's like the other artists that they're doing. 
and they've forgotten about the joys of art because you know as an artist we're the only thing that separates us from the kids that doodle in you know as a toddler is that we really we just kept doing it and we want to improve that's it we want to improve every single time and we kept doing it we didn't stop we didn't see you know art as a childish thing we decided that this is something that's really great and i'm going to pursue this and so when you stop doing that and you stop improving and you stop making mistakes which are the very environment for you know improvement to happen you don't grow at all and it's it's really unfortunate that a lot of people feel this thing and they kind of associate it with art block but a lot i think a lot of people aren't really having art block i think a lot of people are just they're too anxious about the value of every single thing that they do instead of enjoying the process and you know it's a it's a tough thing it doesn't really sound pretty enjoying the process sounds really up there and aloof and something that you know only highly established people say because it's they already made it but it's really that's just it really is what it is like right now it's mermaid you know it's may people should be drawing mermaids for fun you know people should be like oh i i don't know really know what to draw now but i want to draw some mermaids and maybe i'll do some that are really colored and i'm going to do some mermaids from you know the little mermaid and just whatever you can draw your own designs draw do some tech mech mermaids or something you know but i think a lot of because of the very nature of social media now it's like even i'm affected by it. it's like well, what if it doesn't look good and I don't want to post it and I just don't, you just end up not wanting to draw at all, you know? Doing a little mermaid doodle is simple. You know, even with my gesture drawings today, like, you know, there's supposed to be a human people that I need to do for homework that I have to turn in next week, but I could throw in some mermaids in there, you know? And simple, I could do mermaid that way. Um, but it's, you have to be able to have that kind of mindset where it's not all about the result or the final result in order to be able to let yourself create and explore that way and be like, well, let me see. There's some pretty cool, there's actually some pretty cool um, people who have made anatomy and skeletons for mermaids on Pinterest. And you can pick one of those up and use that as a guide for some of your sketches and, you know, just have fun with it. And if it doesn't look good, you try and focus on doing better next time. But when you're worried about how your Instagram is going to grow and you're worried about, you know, what people think and how many likes you're going to get and it doesn't look like that person's artwork, then you just get stuck and you feel depressed and you don't go anywhere. And um, I think instead of scarcity of information today that's limiting us, I think it's the overwhelming amount of information and the overwhelming amount of um, just attention that's available so we think that we should be having a certain amount of it is is really preventing our generation from growing i think i don't even know if it's something that you know could be a waste to make this video because i feel like it's just just the way life is like back in the day it used to be resources now it's who who has the ability to push through social media push through getting frustrated push through getting depressed because they see other people's work and that might just be you know the cutoff for who's able to make it in this world that might just be how it is I'm, I'm not too sure about that um and i also wanted to talk a little bit about the other side of that when i say overload of information i really do mean that there's so much information out there you can just endlessly watch tutorials and be looking for the best method and the best technique and you're just missing out on learning what works for you, missing out on getting those hours and mileage in and those 20 years that I was talking about that Stanley Lau has built up that you don't have yet and you should be working on as soon as possible. And, you know, I get a lot of time like people just don't know where to start. And I think, you know, it's it sucks that that's a thing because it, it should be easy for people to know okay it's the fundamentals i need to learn how to draw and understand things um and understand form and perspective before i can really start being able to manipulate things but a lot of people are kind of distracted i think one of the biggest evidences for this is style there's so many people asking about their style and i don't see that as a thing that any young artist should be worried about i think it's something that's that should come through your diligent practice and understanding of the fundamentals because a style is something that's natural it's not something that you have that just differentiates you and then you immediately have value that's not it it's not the style that makes the artist valuable it's their interpretation of you know what they see in reality that's unique to them but it's because of their 
their their honed ability of it. So one of the people I love like looking at the most is Eliza. Her style is based off of so much exploration and study. She didn't just decide I'm going to start drawing random shapes on people and leave it really sketchy. She knows how to draw. She knows how to draw like anatomy. She knows how to put all that stuff together and, you know, all the fundamentals. It's clear, but through that discovery and process, she has her style now. It's you you can't not recognize it. Um I'll try to leave a link of these people in the description because again, I don't want these videos to get too you know too difficult to make i just want to keep it just you and me right here so um but it's i just i really every time i hear like style or how do you find it it's just this this twisted perspective of thinking that that's what you need instead of just the refinement of your own journey that year by year refinement of your own journey where you learn the fundamentals but also explore what you love and what makes you want to do art in the first place combine those two and work on them for a long time that is what makes artwork valuable i've seen it in my own work it's like when i take a break and i am expressive and freeing something that just looks like a sketch can get way more likes you know because people can just tell this comes from a place of refinement they just it just has this elegance to it and where I can spend hours and hours and hours and hours trying to do something else to look like a certain other artist, it'll just fall flat and people don't really respond to it, you know? And I'll one of the biggest ways is even though, you know, this is kind of, this can be taken the wrong way, but I've noticed that one of the best ways of determining, and, you know, this might not be something that a lot of you can use, but some of you can, um, is that the people, the artists I follow the better, the more freeing, the more explorative, the more um, refined my work tends to be from practice, the more I notice they're like, oh, I like this. It's like I can tell like, oh, a lot of the artists that I follow like this. And I can see like, what's the difference between this work and then the other works? And it's like, it's it's because it's been something that's been honed and tried over and over and over and then they can see that result they can see that attempt that beginning exploration you know i've seen so many of really popular artists support younger artists because you can tell they're not at the same skill level but they're doing things that they know like yes that's that's it that's it that's like those strokes the way you started this the process that is really what how you get there i can see you're on this journey and i want to encourage you i feel like that's what they're thinking um and i feel like that is what we need in our generation instead of f focusing so much on you know likes attention comparing ourselves to others it's just it's just a, a terrible poisonous mindset that i think is slowly sinking um and i feel like even though it might just be the you know this generation's uh kind of pressure test to evaluate who's going to be valuable for the next generation i feel like there's still people who can benefit from hearing about something like this and realizing that they can they need to fall in love again with art and that that journey and process and combining again what they love with learning and studying and growing and exploring in a natural way um, I think another source of evidence for this is the fact that a lot of really big artists out there, when you ask them about themselves, they don't really have anything profound to say because it was natural for them. They just did the work. They tried to do something and it didn't work. And they sat down and said, OK, why does this not work? Why do I why do I not like this? Why do I like this piece of artwork? Why wasn't I able to achieve this? And they just keep trying and it was natural for them. They didn't really get too stressed or worried. Um, and if they did, they didn't let it break them. Um, and I think, again, that was something that's easier for people who are older to do, to do than people who are younger and have all of these new expectations all around them. So I that was kind of a ramble. I didn't make any like bullet points or notes for this video, but um, I hope this helped. I, I really hope that this is going to inspire some of you to, to, to take a new approach to drawing. It's very meta. 
Um, but I have a lot of stuff like this on my mind to talk about with art. Um, and I hope to put this on my art food podcast somewhere. This thing is super messy. It's just like my YouTube channel back in the first year I started it. It's just non-existent and completely random, but hopefully this can be something that's valuable, even though it's just myself talking to you guys. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I hope you guys stay safe, even though you're in quarantine right now, just like I am. Um, stay positive, keep working on your artwork. Uh, you know, again, take some time to maybe if you want, take a break from social media, take a break from everything and try to discover what it is about artwork that you love. Maybe take a break from all the text and all the popular things and focus on art in and of itself. Focus on looking at art, look at artists' websites, you know, and take maybe focus on just one artist you want to learn from or one YouTube channel or just one thing and spend some time with that and just enjoy that process and enjoy that journey or maybe you just cut everything out and do what you want and improve what you're doing in some way even if it's just speed you know some way focus on improving and being happy with what you make because there's got to be something because if you never ever ever loved what you've ever drawn then why would you have still been doing it right you know so think about that and uh, i will see you next week and um i'll see you on friday uh, for my live stream here on YouTube, and I also stream on Twitch Monday through Thursdays, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, also join my Discord, and I have my Patreon, the link in the description, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>